In the last video, we looked at how we could connect together IPsec enabled branches and ExpressRoute enabled data centers or MPLS WANs by using Azure as a transit network. And in that video, we showed how the virtual WAN hub with branch to branch enabled can enable this transit path. And we said, yes, we could also build this with Azure Root Server. And we talked about the use cases why you might want to do this. So check out the previous video for a bit more context. In that video, we showed how you could connect the IPsec branch using a root-based VPN, but with static routing on the Azure side, static routing on the green side. And we showed how that would work with a single tunnel with a Cisco ASA. What I want to offer here is an alternative design wherein you would like to run BGP for dynamic root propagation. And the reason why you might want to do that is, for example, if you spin up new VNets here, they would be dynamically advertised to your branches. You wouldn't have to update static root config on the ASA to reflect that. But also in the opposite direction, if you changed the configuration down here of your branches, if you added additional LAN subnets or networks beyond the ASA, they would be dynamically advertised by the ASA by BGP into Azure. And again, you wouldn't have to update the remote address ranges on your VPN site config in Azure. So I want to do two things in this video. One is to show how this pattern works with BGP and highlight some of the visibility that you get on the Azure side when using BGP now with VPN gateways inside of the VWAN hub. I'd also like to zoom in on the impact of running this design when combined with Cisco ASAs that fundamentally don't support the attachment of BGP sessions using loopback interfaces and the implications that has on our design. And then the third bit we'll touch on is the resilience attributes of this design. And again, some areas you have to be careful with if you're fundamentally doing routing here on a firewall, which is a device that ideally and most often will be tracking TCP state so asymmetrical flows can be problematic. So here's our baseline diagram again, your on-prem express route connected with the 192 range, got the IPsec branch connected with the 10.1.200 range. So let's just jump in the portal and show what that config looks like in respect to the VWAN side. First thing we notice here is inside of private address space, where we had previously statically defined the 10.1.200/24 range. We don't need to do that anymore. In fact, we haven't specified any address spaces because BGP is being used to attract traffic to the tunnel in Azure. So that's one area where we differ here. The next area is, well, we have two tunnels active here. And the fundamental reason for that is we need two tunnels active and we need to rely on BGP to fail over because whereas before we were leveraging the fact that if one of these instances failed in VWAN, the PIP would fail over, that still holds true for this design, but what's important to understand is that if you're establishing a BGP session across this tunnel to one of these instances here, that instance level BGP peer address doesn't fail over during a, a failure scenario of a node in Azure. Therefore, that you need to have another BGP session ready to go from the ASA side. And what we'll see, uh, and is explained in more detail in an article I'll link in the comments, is that for an ASA to establish this topology here, because we can't configure loopbacks and source our BGP sessions from the loopbacks, we fundamentally need two outside interfaces, two outside public addresses on the ASA to achieve this configuration. If we look down here, I see my site configuration in virtual WAN. So I've got a single site defined as on-prem. And inside of that, I've got two links, each representing these two lines here, the two black lines go into two on-prem public IPs. If I open up one of those links, we see the config this time includes a BGP address that I'm peering to and the on-prem ASN number of the BGP autonomous system. The autonomous system is the same, of course, for both links, the BGP address changes. If we look here at the parent level VPN configuration in VWAN and click here into the ASN settings, we can see by default, it gets deployed with some BGP endpoints for you to attach to. So this 10.16.0.13 address, 10.16.0.12 address. Those are the IP addresses that I've configured on the Cisco ASA as my 
destination BGP peers inside of Azure, and I've also enabled the requisite eBGP multi-help feature, because of course we're not establishing BGP directly using the link level addresses. So just before we go any further, showing you the topology and the visibility, etc., just want to jump on my on-prem data center express route connected virtual machine here, start a ping going to 10.1.200.2, which is my IPsec connected branch, and we see that it is working. So there's end-to-end -end reachability here. Let's now flip our attention to a new feature in VWAN VPNs, which is this BGP dashboard setting here. This is a really useful and interesting view and highlights one of the attributes of this ASA design, which is a little bit quirky. So we see that there's four sessions here that Virtual WAN is trying to establish to our links that we've defined, but only two of them are connected. And this is actually okay for this design. So the two links here, the two turquoise colored BGP links are active. We see going from 10.16.12 to 2.1, and 10.16.13 to 1.1, those links are active. But there are also some links that are stuck in a connecting state. And that is expected because what's happening behind the scenes here, each instance of virtual WAN VPN function is trying to build tunnels to both of the link public IPs we specified. Because as we talked about before, this Cisco ASA here can only establish one BGP session over each external IPsec peer. This is not actually a big problem for our design. The design works in a fully resilient way. It's just that you have these tunnels that sit in an unestablished state behind the scenes here, these red lines, where VWAN is trying to be as resilient as possible in terms of building those four tunnels, but our on-prem firewall in this case, due to its configuration restraints, doesn't have the capability to use all four tunnels but it's still a resilient design. As part of the BGP dashboard feature now, we can also look at the routes that are being advertised from our VPN gateway and being received into the VPN gateway. So let's start off by checking the routes that the VPN gateway is advertising to our on-prem BGP enabled branch. The most important route to pay attention to in the context of this video is that we are indeed advertising the 192.168.2.0, my express route branch, to my IPsec VPN peer. We can also check the routes the gateway is learning from the green branch. And when I zoom in here into my routes that I'm learning via BGP, we see that we're learning the 10.1.200 range from my IPsec connected branch. So all of this is now working end to end, but I want to highlight an area around resilience with BGP and ASAs or firewalls in general, which you may need to be cautious of. This is covered a little bit in the white paper I linked to around connecting Cisco ASAs into Azure Virtual WAN. Here I note, as part of the BGP multiple tunnel topology, we need to use BGP AS path prepend to ensure path symmetry. Now, why is that? If we flip back to this diagram, what will happen if you don't tune BGP is that, let's imagine this virtual machine here tries to initiate a connection to this on-premises location. All things being equal, prefix length and BGP metrics, the virtual machine will have a route to your on-prem range via both of these instances of the VPN gateway under the covers in VWAN. And you see that reflected in the effective routes of the virtual machine. So it will ECMP outbound. Your traffic could go over this tunnel or over this tunnel. Let's say the virtual machine sends traffic over this tunnel and it hits the ASA and gets to the destination. When that destination VM responds to its default gateway, the traffic makes its way back to the ASA. If your Cisco ASA is doing standard ECMP hashing, it may end up dropping the traffic on this interface here, a different tunnel interface. That's going to work from a pure layer three routing point of view, which is why this design would work with a router like a Cisco CSR, but it's going to break the flow on most stateful firewalls. Another thing to watch out for here is by default, Cisco ASAs have something called ICMP inspect turned off, which means that you can actually test with ICMP in an asymmetrical way. So you might get false positives there. And also it is possible to turn off the state check-in with something called TCP state bypass, even for regular TCP flows. 
But long story short here is that we want to ensure symmetry by using BGP ASPath prepend. And the configuration there is similar to how you would use ASPath prepend in an express route scenario, wherein, for example, on this link here, on this BGP session here from the ASA into virtual WAN, you would set an ASPath prepend of plus three. And this would ensure that when Azure routes traffic to your on-prem network, it only uses this instance here. So traffic always comes into your ASA this way, and then you carry out the relevant configuration on the ASA local preference or wait or however else you want to configure it to ensure the ASA responds by this tunnel interface. So what you end up with is a design which has got active active tunnels in respect to, yes, the IPsec tunnel data path is online all the time. Yes, the BGP session is online all the time, but you're not actually making full use of the bandwidth through both of those tunnels under, under normal conditions due to the constraints of it being a firewall on-prem. What happens in a failure scenario is if this instance was to go down here or this tunnel was to go down for whatever reason, then the routes via BGP would be withdrawn from this path here. Let's say you're using that as your active path. And after the relevant BGP timers take hold and the routes get taken out of the routing table, you'll start using the other path automatically. Remember, it's important again to have these multiple BGP tunnels because that BGP peer IP is not going to float over to the other instance. And in our testing, using the default timers on both the Azure side and on the ASA side, you're looking at again about 30 seconds for failover here. So that's similar to the failover you get with, with the PIP failing over in a single tunnel design using static routing. So I hope they found that useful. There's two takeaways really. One is check out the white paper for how to integrate ASAs into VWAN and also any active active VPN gateways in Azure. But also this shows you the topology here for express route to VPN transit with a VPN enabled branch. And we talked about the reasons why you might want BGP versus static routing. Anyway, again, any questions about this, put them in the comments below. Anything you want to see in the future, let us know and I'll speak to you in the next one.